Thank you. Thank you for organizing this meeting. It's a great venue, great speakers. Uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, <coughs> glycogen metabolism and how we can regulate glycogen uh, resynthesis. And I will start going back uh, with uh, <coughs> some fundamental observations here uh, by uh, the Swedish uh, scientist uh, Bergström and Hulman. And you all know this uh, famous uh, cartoon in which they show that uh, carbohydrate uh, <coughs> in muscle can be supercompensated uh, after exercise uh, if you provide sufficient of uh, carbohydrate. We just heard that uh, carbohydrate might be uh, quite important for endurance, and I'm not going to discuss this. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, but the problem or the issue is how to uh, resynthesize your glycogen uh, after exercise. Uh, as you can see here, there's uh, various, likely various phenomena going on in this study. So uh, these guys depleted their muscle glycogen content, and then <coughs> within 24 hours, uh, glycogen storage is uh, normalized. Uh, but the muscle is not satisfied. Uh, it wants to keep on uh, going, uh, and it ends up supercompensating uh, the glycogen uh, content to uh, approximately 4 gram per 100 gram. Uh, why is that? Why is the muscle not uh, satisfied? Uh, we don't know. Why doesn't it just stop at normal levels? Uh, I'll try to discuss uh, some of the insights that we have uh, got recently. It has been uh, uh, studied by many uh, uh, previously also, and uh, I'll try to give you some insight. Uh, I'm an, admit my bias. I, I think AMP kinase, which is a signaling molecule in this muscle, is quite important in this phenomenon. And you can shoot me afterwards, uh, but uh, I'll try to argue uh, my case, and we will see. So here is AMP kinase. It's a signaling uh, molecule, cytosolic uh, molecule, and it's interesting for various uh, uh, reasons in metabolism. One of them <coughs> is uh, it was uh, shown that a pig with a mutation in AMP kinase, an activating mutation, actually have very high glycogen content, uh, actually so high that the meat quality of these uh, uh, porks uh, uh, are very bad. <coughs> so here we have a link uh, with, between AMP kinase and glycogen. Uh, <coughs> also, as uh, many of you probably know, all activators of AMP kinase is on the prohibited uh, list uh, at VADA because it's uh, supposed to increase uh, endurance. Uh, <coughs> so it has some importance here as well. And also in various diseases like cancers and uh, metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes, AMP kinase uh, is uh, quite interesting uh, as a, a drug uh, target. Now we came in, uh, became interested in AMP kinase because we could show that during exercise it was uh, activated. Uh, and <coughs> to begin with, like 15 years ago, we were, we were quite naive. Uh, later on, we have seen that AMP kinase is not just one kinase that are in muscle, but actually three kinases in human muscle, five in the rodents. And uh, they are behaving quite differently during exercise. Uh, and this makes it uh, very complex, as also uh, John Hawley uh, said uh, this morning. Uh, now it's not just one, but it's three uh, kinases that we need to follow. And you can see here that we have shown that AMP kinase can, uh, some trimers, the alpha-2 gamma-3 complex is readily activated uh, during exercise, coming down into recovery. Others are more reluctant to be activated during exercise, stays up longer time, comes down. And uh, it, <coughs> sorry, even other uh, complexes are deactivated during exercise and come up into recovery. I will show you some of these data. But because AMP kinase is coming up during recovery, uh, I, and we got the idea that perhaps AMP kinase is important in metabolism after exercise as well. If you go into the literature, and you heard uh, John Hawley mention a lot of things, AMP kinase is the center of the universe. It can do a lot of things. Uh, <coughs> some data suggests that. And um, I I at least if you pharmacologically activate AMP kinase, you can manipulate glucose uptake, lipid handling, lipid oxidation, mitochondria, biogenesis, a lot of uh, metabolic genes, protein synthesis, uh, glucose storage, and insulin sensitivity. But the evidence for this link is very poor, I must say. And uh, I will uh, delete a lot of these because I'm not sure uh, that this is actually the case, leaving uh, AMP kinase with a potential uh, role in glucose storage and insulin sensitivity. 
And this is the uh, case I would like to argue uh, today. So I believe that activation of AMP kinase is important in glucose storage, not by directly regulating glycogen synthase, but by manipulating uh, the concentration of the allosteric regulator of glycogen synthase, uh, namely uh, glucose 6-phosphate. I will also argue that AMP kinase is important in regulating <coughs> uh, a signaling element TBC1D4, uh, which is involved in insulin stimulation of glucose transport, and in this way, AMP kinase becomes important in insulin sensitivity. <coughs> now, uh, we did a human study recently, and I'm going to show you uh, unpublished data now, and we are still sort of trying to figure out what they actually mean. But we, res we visited the holtman bergstrom uh, study, uh, <coughs> a little more invasive. Uh, here we have healthy uh, human subjects, young students uh, from Denmark. Uh, they performed exhaustive exercise with one leg uh, while leaving the other leg as a rested control leg in the one-legged agonema. Uh, the exercise was quite uh, harsh and uh, it was uh, various uh, intensity uh, intervals and the exhaustion occurred after two hours and 30 uh, minutes approximately. Uh, at this time point, uh, they rested for four hours. That was because we would like to see uh, how insulin sensitivity was uh, at a time point where the acute effect of exercise was gone. This is not the optimal protocol to use if you want to supercompensate your glycogen. You should load in immediately after exercise. Uh, so, but this is a more a mechanistic study we would like to do uh, where we are at basal glucose uptake in the legs four hours after exercise. Now, um, <coughs> we took biopsies and we did a hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp. We had catheters in the femoral artery and veins, could do AV balance technique and measure glucose uptake. Uh, <coughs> the subject uh, came back the next day. Uh, we redid the clamp study with biopsies again. Uh, they then didn't show up for two days, but came in again on the Friday and we re repeated uh, the uh, experiment. And during this whole time, they <coughs> had a, a, a high carbohydrate uh, diet, but it was isocaloric. Uh, but this was in an uh, attempt uh, to manipulate uh, the glycogen content. Uh, if we look into glycogen content in the muscle biopsies uh, before the clamp, uh, <coughs> this is what we see. So we can deplete or uh, lower glycogen content by exercise. Uh, it can be normalized on the second day, and then we have some kind of supercompensation uh, on day five. We would have loved to see it a little higher, but as I said, it was not uh, an optimized protocol for supercompensation. But we have now a muscle within the same subject that have low glycogen, normal glycogen, or high glycogen. <coughs> and now we can consider what, what is uh, uh, how can we uh, go in and resynthesize glycogen? You have seen some of these cartoons. This is my simple view of this. We need to have glucose taken up, phosphorylated by hexokinase, delivered at some point to glycogen synthase in the form of UDP glucose. And we would like to inhibit uh, the PDC or PDH uh, <coughs> handling and, and thus uh, uh, glycolysis um, uh, in some way, thereby positioning uh, glucose into glycogen. Uh, so what, uh, what did we see in these uh, human subjects? Well, when we look at uh, glucose uptake, insulin-stimulated glucose uptake the first day after uh, <coughs> where this leg had performed exercise, the ability for insulin to stimulate glucose uptake is markedly higher. We have increased insulin sensitivity on the first day. This has disappeared on the second day and the fifth day. And the higher glycogen uh, in the exercise muscle does not suppress insulin-stimulated glucose uptake. So we have a, a quite uh, normal uh, or large flux of glucose uh, coming into the muscle under these uh, conditions. If we look into the biopsies <coughs> and measure uh, glycogen synthase activity, you can see here in the white bar, which is a rested leg, that it's increased by insulin, as we would expect. Uh, quite normal and it hasn't been influenced by the one-legged exercise at all. Whereas uh, the activity of glycogen synthase in the prior exercise leg is higher uh, both at basal and at insulin-stimulated stage 
on day one and two, and also during insulin stimulation at day five. So there's a huge uh, increase in the activity of glycogen synthase. When glycogen synthase is activated, it's actually dephosphorylated, and this increase the sensitivity to the allosteric regulator uh, glucose 6-phosphate. So that becomes important uh, later on. Now, <coughs> we also saw some interesting phenomenon on hexokinase protein uh, expression. So here in the exercise leg, seven hours after exercise, there's an increase of 20-25%, which is maintained all through uh, the experiment, and perhaps it even becomes larger at, at day five. So this means that we have a higher capacity to phosphorylate glucose to glucose 6-phosphate in these prior exercised uh, muscle. So <coughs> we have increased insulin sensitivity at least the first day. We have increased hexokinase uh, capacity. We have increased uh, GS activation, all potentially leading to a greater flux uh, into glycogen. And uh, I don't show you, but we have increased uh, <coughs> or decreased activity of the PDC cycle. We have only indicative of this by measuring phosphorylation state. But this all would decrease the glycolysis and therefore increase the partitioning into glycogen. So this is observation that, that we can do in humans. And <coughs> can we now explain what is going on? And uh, here then, <coughs> what is prior exercise doing in order to manipulate insulin sensitivity and the expression and regulation of these enzymes? And uh, <coughs> in this human experiment, we looked at AMP kinase activity, uh, both those that are uh, have the alpha-2 catalytic subunits, which behave quite similar in a sense. Even f uh, four hours after exercise, six hours after exercise, it's uh, activated still. Also, this complex is activated, whereas on day two and five, they seem to come back. Uh, but to our big surprise, the activity of the alpha-1 complex is high uh, immediately or four hours after exercise, and it stays high for the whole uh, experimental uh, settings. So this leaves us with a, a human settings where AMP kinase activity in some way or the other is elevated for a long period of time, and in particularly in the beginning or in the immediately post-exercise period. Does this mean anything? Uh, <coughs> it's hard to get this kind of proof in humans. And I, <coughs> I must admit that I need, I need now to go into rodent models, uh, trying to persuade you that AMP kinase is an important uh, regulator of the insulin sensitivity in skeletal muscle. Um, <coughs> and we have uh, developed a mouse model in which uh, neither alpha-1 or alpha-2 is expressed. This is from birth on, uh, <coughs> and uh, they have these caveat as we discussed yesterday, but I will show you uh, various other data as well. So if we take an activator of uh, AMP kinase, ICAR riboside, stimulate muscle for one hour in this case, and uh, take out the <coughs> muscle, uh, uh, have the muscle recovering in the bath for six hours, and then stimulate with a submaximal dose of insulin, and measure glucose uptake in these muscles by tracers, you in a wild type can see that uh, six hours after ICAR treatment, there is no difference in glucose uptake, but the ability for insulin, submaximal dose of insulin, to activate glucose uptake is market, markedly enhanced uh, in the muscle that were treated with ICAR compared to uh, uh, saline treated. This is occur uh, occurring only in muscle if they have AMP kinase. If you don't have AMP kinase or the muscle don't have, you don't see this potentiation uh, effect. Now this was pharma. Uh, you could also go into muscle contraction. For instance, in this model, where we do in situ contraction for 10 minutes, uh, take out muscle, have them recover for three hours, and then we stimulate them with insulin, either submaximal or maximal dose. And you can see the ability for insulin to stimulate glucose uptake is elevated in muscle from wild type mice. But in mice that do not have AMP kinase, uh, there is not uh, any of this potentiation. Now, for some of you who would say, well, this is trivial. Uh, for me, this has been uh, 10 years of research where we have looked for any factors that could possibly explain the ability for exercise to increase insulin sensitivity. So this is actually uh, quite uh, fantastic in my view. 
<coughs> and uh, the question then is, how is AMP kinase uh, doing this? And again, <coughs> we think this is regulating uh, by, uh, or by acting on the GTPase activating protein TBC1D4, which is also utilized by insulin to regulate the amount of glucose transporters at the plasma membrane. There is, an, <coughs> as I will show you, an interaction uh, between the action of AMP kinase on this molecule seemingly so that upon subsequent insulin stimulation, these signaling molecules are more uh, ready or available for regulation by insulin and thereby leading to even more glucose transporter at the cell surface membrane. Uh, <coughs> here are the rodents uh, data to suggest this. This is uh, with muscle contraction. It could be with ICA riboside increased phosphorylation of TBC1D4 in wild type in response to insulin if the muscle had been prior contracted or prior treated with ICAR, but only if you have AMP kinase present and we have other phosphorylation sites and so on. So this is indicative of there's an interaction, a crossroad signaling between uh, AMP kinase uh, and insulin uh, at this uh, point in the cascade. Can we reflect this in any human observation? Yes, indeed. Uh, we have uh, three or four studies, and we have also studies coming out from uh, uh, Greg Cartes laboratory in Michigan, uh, in rodents though, but it's all confirmative. Uh, so here we have in humans, again, we do one-legged exercise, do the clamp, uh, the exercise leg take up much more glucose in the recovery period uh, than the prior uh, rested leg. And if we take biopsies at various time points and measure phosphorylation of TBC1D4, it is highly uh, <coughs> potentiated by prior exercise. This is one side. There are several other sites that can be that we know are regulatory for the action or function of TBC1D4. Is this any proof that TBC1D4 is involved? No, unfortunately. Uh, and further studies in our laboratory will try to. Uh, to elucidate this, and one very exciting uh, upcoming uh, experiment is going to be performed uh, in Copenhagen, but on Greenlandic uh, Inuits. Uh, these <coughs> happens uh, to uh, ho or have 20% of the Inuits approximately have a mutation in the TBC1D4 uh, gene uh, in the form that is expressed in skeletal muscle, and. Uh, <coughs> We will now try, we have a cohort, uh, a genotyped cohort of about 5,000 Inuits from which we can recruit. And we will have those uh, flown down to Copenhagen in which we will uh, look into insulin and exercise uh, metabolism and, and so on. And hopefully we can then confirm that TBC1D4 is uh, quite uh, important for exercise to increase insulin action. <coughs> now, uh, some of these data in the mice were performed ex vivo, and you could wonder, is AMP kinase at all important for glycogen uh, synthesis? And therefore, we performed some additional experiment again in the mouse. And uh, here we have <coughs> mouse that were running on the treadmill for one and a half hour, and then were challenged with glucose by Gavage, either immediately or one hour or both. Uh, <coughs> after in, into the recovery, and we uh, looked at muscle both at five hours and at one hour to see how this glycogen actually uh, regulated. And here are some examples. Uh, these are representative for all the muscle we have been looking at. Uh, <coughs> wild type open bars, glycogen is used during exercise, and uh, with five hours of recovery with glucose <coughs> ingestion or by Gavash you can actually supercompensate your glycogen content, or the mouse can, and uh, this is actually only occurring if the muscle express AMP kinase. So if you don't have AMP kinase, resynthesis of glycogen is markedly uh, delayed or not uh, actually really happening. So this suggests that AMP kinase has an important role in this post-exercise glycogen synthesis rate. Uh, <coughs> and if we measure the synthesis rate by tracers, you can see uh, here, this is only the, during the first hour into recovery. It is markedly uh, suppressed uh, in muscle. Now, due to the criticism of uh, these uh, type of mice, 
uh, we also have used uh, inducible, uh, inducible mice, where we can induce in the adult animal uh, the gene deletion. And we have used this uh, with tamoxifen, as we also heard uh, yesterday, using the MCM uh, promoter. <coughs> and uh, these mice are going to describe a phenotype that are quite surprising uh, to the field of AMP kinase, I'm quite sure, uh, because it does not reflect uh, all what we think. Uh, but in this case, where we are looking at uh, glucose metabolism, they are quite uh, reflecting what we saw in the other model. So if we take away AMP kinase in adult mice, uh, and AMP kinase disappear within three to four weeks, uh, and do the same experiment. They are fantastic runners. There's no phenotype there. Uh, and the ability to synthesize glycogen by tracer is markedly uh, diminished. Uh, glucose taken up both during exercise and in the recovery period is quite normal. Uh, but again, the ability to uh, resynthesize glycogen uh, is uh, suppressed. Uh, I don't have the acute uh, data here, but uh, they are probably down here coming up and it's definitely different from uh, the wild types. So <coughs> having uh, a lack of, of AMP kinase gave you problems in resynthesis uh, of glycogen storage. Can we reflect this in any humans? Uh, not by the lack of AMP kinase, but by the uh, expression of a constitutive active uh, AMP kinase, uh, we can. So uh, here, uh, Mary Ellen Harbour, uh, was so lucky to stumble on a family with a point mutation in one of the regulatory subunits uh, of AMP kinase. It's an extremely rare uh, mutation. We have been looking for it in European cohorts and others and have not found it. Uh, <coughs> but anyway, it's fantastic data. Uh, and, and here they measure muscle glycogen in these subjects. There was uh, three or four family members who want to have a biopsy taken. The glycogen content in this uh, family with a constitutive active AMP kinase is approximately twice as high as <coughs> a control a group. Of course, there can always be uh, who is the right control for this family. It's hard to say, uh, but definitely also uh, <coughs> from what we see and if we compare, uh, this seems uh, quite impressive. So yes, we also have uh, human data to suggest that at least constitutive activation of AMP kinase will promote glycogen synthesis. <coughs> so back to, uh, to the model um, here in the mice at least we saw this suppressed glycogen synthesis. Um, there is a normal glucose uptake, normal expression of glucose transporters, hexokinase is norm normal and the activation of glycogen synthesis is quite normal. Uh, so everything is in favor uh, of uh, leading to uh, glycogen resynthesis, but it does not occur. And why is that? Uh, probably the answer is here. Uh, if we measure um, uh, at this time point the amount of glucose 6 phosphate in a mouse that do not have AMP kinase, it is substantially lower than a wild type animal. And uh, my suggestion would then be that yes, we have increased flux through the system, but rather than going this way, it is going down uh, glycolysis. And <coughs> indeed, if we measure uh, like here phosphorylation of PDH, it is markedly lower, uh, which means that it's markedly activated uh, <coughs> in the mice or in the muscle that do not have AMP kinase. Uh, so this would suggest that <coughs> AMP kinase would increase insulin sensitivity by this increasing the flux here. And if you do have AMP kinase, you will suppress PDC complex or PDH and suppress glycolysis, leaving the glucose 6-phosphate uh, for going into glycogen. So this is uh, my major, uh, major take-home message that AMP kinase is important in various uh, aspects. And I'm not, uh, do I have a minute or two more? Yes, because if I do have so, I will, uh, just one minute, I will just skip the, this slide and just show you the importance of glucose 6-phosphate in glycogen resynthesis. We have taken a mouse, <coughs> a, a, a knock-in mouse in which the gene for glycogen synthase is mutated 
on one residue enable the enzyme to be bound and allosterically regulated by glucose 6-phosphate. And the data is shown here in a wild type muscle. Glycogen synthase can readily be regulated by G6P, but in the <coughs> double knock-in, uh, uh, there is absolutely no regulation of, G of G6P. So if we take these mice, <coughs> or muscle from these mice, either ex vivo perform electrical stimulation for contraction and measure glycogen synthesis rate. It is hardly present in the muscle that cannot be regulated by glucose 6-phosphate. It's also seen in vivo, uh, like with the same settings that I showed you before, hardly any resynthesis. And this is despite that glucose uptake is normal. There's a huge elevation of glucose 6-phosphate in these muscles, but it's not sufficient to drive any synthesis uh, during uh, exercise recovery. So uh, this was just to make the point that glucose 6-phosphate is an extremely important uh, regulator of the flux or partitioning of glucose into glycogen or through glycolysis. By that, I would like to end my talk and uh, thank you for your attention. I would like to thank my collaborators and I hope I have given you at least some insight to what we are doing and what we are thinking uh, currently in glycogen resynthesis. So thank you very much.